Hi there, welcome to my berry patch. Today's video is on a not so well known berry called a honey berry, and I'm going to cover their impressive nutritional profile. So stay tuned because you're going to be very interested in how honey berries blow all other berries out of the water, including blueberries. First, welcome to my channel, Clean Food Living. If you like learning about the health benefits of natural foods like today's video on honey berries, fermenting vegetables, a little farm and garden, wild edibles like rose hips, then hit that subscribe button because I would love to have you be a part of my channel. Without further ado, let's talk honey berries. So what is a honey berry? Well, all these bushes that you see behind me are my honey berry bushes. They're native to Siberia, Russia, and certain varieties, Japan. They're also known as Haskap. The nutritional profile that we're going to cover with honeyberries is impressive, but their superpower is their rich, rich, rich in anthocyanins. Anthocyanins are a type of flavonoid, a class of compounds with antioxidant effects in the polyphenol family. Anthocyanins are the pigments that give red, purple, and blue plants their rich coloring, the same way beta carotene gives carrots and winter squash their orange coloring. Anthocyanins act as an antioxidant. They fight free radicals, they're anti-inflammatory, antiviral, and even anti-cancer. In herbal medicine, anthocyanins have been used to treat a number of conditions, including blood vessel health, chronic venous insufficiency, high blood pressure, diabetic retinopathy, it can help fend off heart disease, and like I just mentioned, cancer. In 2009, a group of Slovakian researchers published a study that analyzed anthocyanin content of six uncommon berries. Honeyberries, black mulberries, cornelian cherries, dewberries, blackthorns, and rowan berries. In this study, honeyberries had considerably the highest levels of anthocyanins. In a nutrient profile of about a quarter cup or 100 grams, Here's where honeyberries rank compared to other fruits. We're going to be comparing the hascap, also known as the honeyberry, pomegranates, blueberries, oranges, grapes, and apples. Under the potassium column, hascaps have 190 milligrams of potassium, pomegranates 236, blueberries 70, oranges 130, grapes 130, and apples 110. Under the calcium column, Honeyberries have 38 milligrams of calcium, pomegranates 10, blueberries 8, oranges 17, grapes 6, apples 3. Under the phosphorus column, honeyberries 25 milligrams of phosphorus, pomegranates 36, blueberries 9, oranges 12, grapes 13, and apples 8. Under the iron column, honeyberries have 0.6 milligrams of iron, pomegranates 0.6, blueberries 0.2, oranges 0.1, grapes 0.2, and apples 0.1. Under vitamin A in the form of beta carotene, honeyberries have 130 milligrams of vitamin A, pomegranates 0, blueberries 55, oranges 60, grapes 15, and apples 11. For vitamin C, honeyberries have 44 milligrams of vitamin C, pomegranates 10, blueberries 9, oranges 35, grapes 4, and apples 3. For vitamin E, honeyberries have 1.1 milligrams, pomegranate 0.6, blueberry 1.7, oranges 0.4, grapes 0.3, apples 0.2. Honeyberries take second in potassium and phosphorus next to pomegranates, and blueberries have a trace amount more of the vitamin E, but honeyberries really crush it in first place with the calcium, iron, vitamin A, and C. And of course, anthocyanins. Honeyberries also contain vitamins B1, B2, B6, and the minerals copper, magnesium, and manganese. Honeyberries are an excellent cold climate berry. They ripen even in early June. Now at the time of me filming this video, it is the second week in June. Obviously I'm all bundled because it's Montana and that's just how the weather goes. We have a very short growing season here. But that's the reason why I love honeyberries. My honeyberries are already ripe and ready to pick and they've been that way for a week now. They also don't need acidic soil the way that blueberries do. This is a very non-fussy plant, which again, I love it for that. Put it in the ground, it grows. So what do they taste like? Well, in my opinion, they taste like an unripe blueberry, except they are ripe. 
they have a very tart flavor to them. So if you're not a big fan of tart, they may not be the berry for you to eat by the handful just straight up the way you can with raspberries and strawberries, blueberries, because those are all a lot sweeter and more mild. But what I do is I pick a handful every morning fresh and I add it to my oatmeal along with other fruit and then also I add them to my smoothies. When you add them to other foods, it really helps bring down their tart intensity. If you want to plant your own honeyberries, you'll need at least two varieties for cross-pollination and that will give you your best berry yields. In my berry patch here, I've got three different varieties going. I have a total of six bushes, two of each variety. The varieties do have different characteristics. As you can see, one variety grows tall and the other low to the ground. One's kind of just medium. One variety may have a larger berry than the other as well. And just a tip, to keep them under control once they're established, prune them back heavily in the spring before they leaf out. They grow best in the colder growing zones like zone 2, zone 3, and zone 4. So this is really music to your ears if you're in a cold climate. Now if you're in a zone 8 or higher, then growing honeyberries isn't going to work for you. They really thrive in the colder climates. And if you're not familiar with growing zones, the higher the number means the warmer the climate and the lower the number means the colder the climate. So the tropics are a zone 10. And then for me here in Montana, I'm a zone four, but if you go up into Canada, like Alberta and keep heading north, you're gonna hit the zones three, two. If you're not sure what growing zone you're in, I'll leave a link in the description below of a website where you just enter your zip code and it tells you what growing zone you're in. I hope you learned a thing or two in today's video and unfortunately you're not going to find honeyberries at your grocery store, maybe a farmer's market, so hopefully you're inspired to start growing your own if you live in a growing zone lower than 8. If you want to watch some of my other videos and be inspired for that clean food living lifestyle, check them out right here. Also, hit that subscribe button. Until next time, bye!